So the topic of my talk will be mineral bone disease after kidney transplantation. And the plan of my presentation actually consists of four points. Biochemical abnormalities, vascular uh, involvement, bone disease, and treatment, finally. We shall start with a bone abnormal, uh, biochemical abnormalities. Generally, after our successful kidney transplantation, we have a trend for normalization of all parameters, FG23, soluble clotal, PTH, calcium, phosphate, uh, 25 uh, vitamin D. However, the, the results are not fully normal, the, the, the parameters are not fully normalized. And uh, this improvement actually has its uh, clinical outcomes in clinical implications. So we have reduced mortality, improved cardiovascular disease, uh, decreased uh, incidence of cardiovascular events. We have improved bone health and vascular health. I will re briefly run, we don't have too much time, but uh, I'll run through the slides uh, talking about the different parameters. So FGF23 is, is associated with higher mortality uh, post-transplant and its reduction is associated with better mortality. Well, what is interesting is that FGF23 may be increased uh, after successful kidney donation compared to healthy controls. Similarly, soluble clotho is reduced after kidney donation. Uh, right, it appears that I have missed the slide. So calcium phosphate changes. Generally, they are rapid, rapidly normalized within the first 12 months. However, uh, what we do know that uh, a certain percentage of patients may have elevated PTH, may have elevated calcium lower phosphate levels due to persistent uh, persistent hyperparathyroidism, due to lower GFR levels. Uh, and uh, this is actually a, a way to correct them, what will be mentioned uh, in the slides to, to come. And finally, vitamin D as one of the parameters. It actually it appears that approximately 80% of the kidney transplant recipients do have vitamin D insufficiency, uh, according to our studies. And uh, the major aspect of what is new is it is not only calcium phosphate, but it's also vitamin D pleiotropy. However, the results currently are inconsistent and uh, therefore, uh, vitamin D pleiotropy, the idea is we cannot rely on it uh, currently. Post-transplant bone disease, the major aspect, oh, we, uh, it is associated with uh, osteoporosis, renal osteodystrophy, and the most important part of bone disease is uh, bone fracture incidence. So the two aspects of bone strength are bone density evaluated by DEXA, DO, Energy, X, um, X-ray, absorptiometry, but also bone quality that, is uh, that consists of microarchitecture, turnover, bone uh, turnover, mineral structure. These are details that actually are not uh, uh, evaluated in everyday life and everyday clinical practice. And we, ha we need either biop bone biopsy that is invasive testing or non-invasive testing such as higher resolution CT or MRI. So uh, there are several uh, factors that do influence vitamin, uh, sorry, do influence bone health after transplantation. They are traditional malnutrition, age, hypogonadism, CKD related, transplant related, and in transplant related once we should lay a stress on steroids, as steroid minimization appears to be one of the major aspects that improves results uh, over the last years. So briefly, what is the epidemiology of the bone disease? We have major, the most important loss of bone density occurs during the first year, higher fracture rates during the first six months, and we have the major fracture sites are actually the distal skeleton compared to uh, dialysis where the fractures are located more centrally. So we have fractures that are associated with, hip, associated with mortality, especially hip and spine fractures. And I shall briefly compare dialysis versus uh, transplant uh, fractures. So we have uh, predominantly distal skeleton, we have lower for hip fracture risk, we have lower mortality compared to dialysis patients. And we have inconsistent results yet for total fracture risk, but it should be noted that, uh, noticed that 
Uh, actually, it is um, um, older studies that influence uh, the results of uh, recent meta-analysis because previously larger doses of steroids were used uh, post-transplant. Right, so how do we diagnose bone disease? First of all, imaging, and uh, quite logically, we shall start with uh, a standard DEXA. DEXA is available, it is cheap, we, have a, we do have personnel to evaluate the results. However, we don't have any results and any information about uh, bone quality. In addition, surrounding tissues may well influence the results, and it is a two-dimensional measurement of uh, bone health. Therefore, additional tools were, were created. The first one is trabecular bone score. What is this? This is actually a lumbar spine DEXA, that, uh, and the results from this testing were re-evaluated, re-transformed by special software so that we could get information about uh, bone microarchitecture and generally about bone quality. Right, so where we are in terms of TBS after kidney transplantation, there were several studies dealing with this very imaging technique, indicating that there is a lower TBS after transplantation. Interestingly, in certain cases, normal, where normal BMD was detected on standard DEXA, lower TBS was, uh, was discovered. Uh, another option is high resolution peripheral quantitative uh, computed tomography. It's CT of the extremities. It also evaluates quantity in addition to uh, bone density. And in addition, what it gives more information is about different compartments of the bone. So we have cortical bone and trabecular bone are being evaluated. And interestingly, the radiation is three times lower compared to standard DEXA. It is evaluated. We have, uh, well, we do have information about um, kidney transplant bone that actually we have reduced uh, cortical thickness, reduced trabecular thickness, but the point is that the availability is low because, and the price is relatively high. High resolution MRI, we have similar advantages, similar disadvantages, and what is interesting is that, uh, or what you see on top is that MRI post-transplant was, high resolution MRI was, uh, was detected to outperform DEXA and uh, peripheral CT in the setting of kidney transplantation. We shall briefly mention some uh, serum markers, uh, serum bone, bone turnover markers. Uh, generally, uh, in the general population, uh, only half of those that are depicted on the slide are being used and are validated. In CKD3 to 5D in native kidneys, most of the biomarkers are not validated and are not recommended for use, except for alkaline phosphatase and PTH. Uh, well, after kidney transplantation, uh, we, uh, we don't have too, too many information about the, uh, the, the, inform, the, inform, the information that we get from bone turnover markers, once again, uh, except for PTH and alkaline phosphatase. And we can expect that in GFRs below 60, these markers cannot be used. And we shall quickly run through bone histology, which is re really a very, very important topic. It is regarded as the golden standard. However, over the next slides, we shall demonstrate that actually this is not exactly so. According to the KDGU guidelines, we have uh, this, uh, KDGU suggests that uh, bone biopsy can be performed in cases when uh, biopsy will guide treatment. We know that uh, bone histology that ob uh, obtains information about turnover, mineralization, volume, and the TMV classification is formed as forming six types of renal osteodystrophy. However, from biopsy, we can get information about uh, uh, signs of osteoporosis. The point is that we do have uh, disadvantages. It is expensive, it is painful, it is invasive. We need expert uh, pathologists, we need expert uh, operators that, uh, to, in order to provide adequate sampling. Therefore, a relatively low number of procedures are being performed annually. Interestingly, bone biopsy was uh, detected to have uh, 
no correlation to biomarkers and imaging post-transplant. So some authors uh, do press for more biopsy in the future. Uh, I will finish uh, the bone uh, the topic very quickly, so we shall talk about the predictors for bone health. Interestingly, the results from bone histology do not, uh, cannot predict, predict uh, uh, very uh, accurately the risk for fracture, similar to the FRAC score and the bone markers. Well, vascular calcification has already been discussed uh, uh, here uh, at this meeting, and several risk factors are, uh, uh, are present for, rest, for vascular calcification post-transplant. Every single factor should be taken into consideration, uh, especially those that are modifiable, in order to reduce the risk for cardiovascular events post-transplant. And the reason for this is actually the, a recent study from 2023 that demonstrated, uh, actually that compared the risk and the prevalence of, uh, of uh, vascular events in dialysis patients in blue, uh, in kidney transplant recipients in red, and uh, general population in yellow. What you clearly see, the prevalence of the incidence of, of uh, vascular events is significantly higher in dialysis patients. It is significantly lower in kidney transplant recipients, and it actually nears the, uh, the results for the general population. A overall analysis, as well as subgroup analysis, actually demonstrated that there is no significant difference between general population and Kidney transplant, uh, kidney transplant recipients. However, once we have a single episode of cardiovascular event, and the mortality increases significantly. Therefore, we should do every possible, uh, every possible action should be taken in order to avoid a uh, cardiovascular event. Right, what about treatment? Generally, well, probably the most important part is what renal replacement modality to choose. It was demonstrated over the next, over the last slides and in the uh, general in the literature that kidney transplantation is the better option. We have better vascular mortality, we have better bone health. Therefore, kidney transplant is the option uh, to choose. All right, so there are different aspects of treatment. I will lay a stress actually only on one point, that is anti-resortive therapy. Why? Because anti-resortive therapy generally is, uh, leads to lower bone turnover. However, we do know that uh, bone turnover may be reduced after kidney transplantation, and it can theoretically worsen if we use uh, bisphosphonates and denosumab, and may increase the risk theoretically for adynamic bone disease. However, the current results the demonstrate, I've deliberately chosen those studies that uh, have histology. So uh, in, in red, you see a study that demonstrates increased risk for ABD, whereas the, the other three uh, studies dem do not demonstrate risk for ABD. So it's, uh, we, we do have inconsistent results, and this is the reason why uh, anti-resorptive therapy can be initiated in patients with high fracture risk. Finally, denosumab. Denosumab, uh, it has been evaluated for immunological risk, no immunological risk, a risk for hypoglycemia, risk for urinary tract infections. What is interesting is its comparison, it is effectiveness first in kidney transplant recipients. It, is, uh, it was proven that denosumab increases uh, bone mineral density, and what is more, a comparison between uh, bisphosphonates and denosumab, it appears that uh, denosumab is superior to bisphosphonates. The point is that we don't have, I'm sorry, I'll bring back the, the, this very important table. The point is that we don't have bone biopsy results. So we are not absolutely sure what the, where, do we, where do we stand in terms of the risk for ABD. So to sum up, we have uh, mineral bone disease, it is highly prevalent. There are numerous risk factors that increase the risk for mineral bone disease. It is associated with higher mortality, poorer quality of life. Uh, 
Well, as for our diagnosis, we still need more information on serum biomarkers. Probably more biopsies are needed in the future. There are modifiable factors that should be adequately and very rigorously corrected so that we have uh, better outcomes and probably more tr new treatment and more uh, data on the, the current treatment are awaited. Thank you for your attention.